very first prototype ATF to fly was Northrop's YF-23, which on 27 August 1990 was airborne for 50 minutes. It climbed to 25,000 feet. Test pilot Paul Metz was very pleased. At brake release, the pilot comes right up to uh, military power, very smooth uh, increase in RPM, and a very decided push down the uh, runway. Approaching about 120 knots, you apply aft stick, and the nose comes up very smoothly. You'll sit on the mains for just a few seconds and then uh, lift off. Once you're airborne, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a real rocket. Uh, it begins climbing uh, very rapidly. And even in military power. Now, right off the bat, it was obvious from the minute I lifted off the ground, we had something special here. Okay, I've got Ghost 5 up loud and clear and uh, radar contact. It flies with the best of the best in terms of handling quality. It's just solid as a rock out here, Paul. Feels good here. The first landing that you make in an airplane is the one that you worry about the most at night before you ever do it. It turns out that uh, the YF-23, uh, there's no demanding part of the landing. Uh, coming down final approach, um, the merest suggestion of uh, requirement to change your speed and the airplane responds instantly. It rides through the bumps and the turbulence smooth as silk. And the flight control system is to credit for that. The actual flare and landing touches down like a feather. This airplane, I believe, has the capability of having over 6,000 individual parameters monitored. Uh, I kind of stopped short of measuring my heartbeat, but outside of that, just about everything in the airplane is measured, monitored, and either relayed back to the ground control station through a telemetry system very similar to what we use in the space shuttle program, or recorded on board in a magnetic tape system that's on the airplane. So we know how this airplane lives, breathes, and works for us every second and microsecond that it's airborne. First few flights, uh, the data shows that we're meeting the predictions very well. At the present time, we have... Nimble and quick like a cat. That's the first impression that I had from the moment I got the airplane up. Two instances uh, come to mind. Uh, I can remember distinctly the uh, chase pilots uh, having to go to afterburner to stay with me uh, with my landing gear down, their landing gear up, and I'm not even using afterburner. The other instance uh, was during some low-speed uh, maneuvering performance testing that didn't uh, seem uh, particularly unusual to me until later when discussing with the test pilots uh, in the two chase airplanes. They tried to use afterburner to stay with me in the low-speed conditions and uh, dropped back behind me, and I uh, simply outturned them. Back to the left. I don't think uh, you can help but look at this airplane and, and have a reaction to the uh, cleanliness of it. And, uh, the sleepness of the lines and the flowing lines. It's striking in its appearance and it's striking in its performance. There's a cliche amongst the aircraft designers. I think Marcel Dassault was the first to uh, say that if an air looks good, it'll fly good. And this airplane looks good, and I can assure you it flies good. The ATF had been in demonstration validation, or what the Air Force calls Dem Val, from October 1986 to the beginning of 1991. This phase served to generate as much information as possible to demonstrate the feasibility and capability of the technology. Demonstration validation reduced the risk of the next phase of the program, full-scale development. This was scheduled to begin in the summer of 1991. The demonstration validation phase included the objective of successfully balancing capability with cost. Affordability is a key consideration. The ATF developers work to achieve the most cost-effective weapon system, which defeats the increasing threat to our air superiority capabilities. 